As you already know, Chaos released the beta version of VRA6 and anyone can join. If you are interested in the new features, please check the video I uploaded recently and you can see the link on the top right corner. In this video, we will see more in depth the latest feature called Chaos Scatter. It allows us to distribute objects randomly on a surface. I have this project and let's do a test render. To fill the ground with grass, I will simply go to Chaos Cosmos Browser, to 3D Models, Presets, and simply drag and drop the Grass Lawn 001 to my surface. You can see that it automatically gets distributed. Let's do a test render. Now, let's say that I want to create a path. I have created this curved line. Let me also isolate it to see it better. And I want my path to follow this line. I will select the scatter and go to its parameters. I will scroll down to find the areas rollout. I will go to the SP line excludes, click on the plus icon and select the line. Now we have asked the grass to be excluded along this line. If I render though, we don't see any difference. That's because we haven't set a near and far value. I will click on the line and then go to the near value and make it 50 cm. The far value automatically adjusts to 50 cm as well. If we now render, we see a path created along the line with a width of 100 cm, 50 cm on each side of the line. See what a nice path we created? and with no modeling effort at all. If we make the far value 100 cm, giving the near value 50 cm, we create a fall off at the edge of the path. Let me assign a material to the path. I will open the Cosmos browser, go to materials, ground, and drag and drop the dirt brown 07. The scale looks huge, so I will change the tiling to 6x6. That's much better now. In my grass, I also want to add some small flowers. To do so, I will go to the Cosmos Browser, 3D Models, Flowers, Grass and Rocks, I will drag aside the flowers that I want to use, these two. And now I will select the grass scatter, go to its parameters, and in the instance model objects, I will click on the plus icon and select my two new models. Let's render. So now you see that our grass is full with yellow flowers. If you don't want them to be so dense, I will go to the scatter parameters, select them and change their frequency. When the frequency is set to 1, then all the objects will be scattered equally. The lower the frequency, the less frequent they will be distributed. I will set the frequency for the flowers to 0.1.
Now let's say that I want to create a cluster of yellow flowers somewhere here at the edge of my path. I have created this circle where I want my flowers to be placed. I will create a new scatter, so I will click on the Create Chaos Scatter button. Click and drag to create it and go to its parameters. I will go to the Objects rollout and on the Distribute on Target Objects, click on the plus icon and then on my ground. Then I will go to the Instance Model Objects, click on the plus icon and click on the two yellow flowers. So now we have asked the two flowers to distribute on the ground. But as we said, we don't want them to be scattered all over the ground, but only inside the area I marked with the circle. To do so, we will go to the area rollout, to the S-Line includes, click on the plus icon and click on our circle. In the scattering rollout, if I click on the Enable checkbox, I enable and disable the scattering. So you can see from the preview here that inside the circle it has only distributed one flower. To change the number of the object distributed, we need to go to the surface scattering rollout and to the count value. If I enable the per square checkbox, I am now asking to place 1000 flowers per 10 by 10 centimeters. And you can see how dense they look. If I move the circle, I am basically moving the flower cluster. Let's now add some trees. I will open the Cosmos browser, go to 3D models, vegetation and trees. I will drag and drop these three types and create a new scatter. And I will ask to distribute these three trees on our ground. Now it's way too dense and one tree is on top of the other. I will enable the avoid collision option and this way one object can't be touching the other. But I will set the spacing to 40%. And as we did with the grass, we will also exclude the trees from the path. Now, as you can see here, the trees are placed right where my camera is and they are also going inside the house. So what we need to do to avoid this is to create new shapes to exclude the trees from. More specifically, I have created a rectangle at the perimeter of my house. So let's exclude this. And I have also created this circle around my camera to restrict having trees here and so nothing will obstruct our camera view. If the scattered objects follow the inclination of the ground and look like they are bending, go to the steeping angle and set the normal versus Z 1 instead of 0. This way, the scattered objects will face upwards. The trees look uh, rather big, so I would like to scale them down a bit. I will go to scaling and set them between 60 to 70%. 
I will also change the count number to 500 to have less trees. That's better. I can see the bottom part of the proxy preview and so I understand that some of my trees are floating. To avoid that, I will go to the transformation rollout, to the translation and set Z to maybe minus 150 centimeters. Now the trees will start lower. If we want to change any of the instances, we will click on the Edit Instances button. I will select this one and press Delete to delete it. Or select this one and move it over here. Then I will click again on the Edit Instances button to disable it. Moreover, we can choose Convert to Max Geometry and now our trees are converted to Proxy and we can easily adjust them. So see how easy it is to set your landscape with Chaos Scatter? Please leave your comments below this video to share your thoughts on this new feature. Personally, I really, really love it. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in my next video.